Hi everyone, this is Tuplex. Welcome back. Um, <clears throat> before we get started on the <clears throat> on the next activity, excuse me, um, I wanted to talk about plastic because we had identified a potential problem in that the output belts are not getting fully compressed. Um, and I've managed to get it almost to where it's almost fully compressed by adding a second output inserter on the left side on the last machine for each belt that helps fill in that little gap that we're getting on the left side of the belt um, and what you were just seeing there with a little gap every once in a while that's the best that I've been able to do um, and I looked at I looked at Matthew's design, right, which looks like this. It's a little it's a little simpler actually, it uses fewer inserters, which is good. But when I ran this in creative mode with a with a material void at the end of the belts, I was still getting little gaps in it. And ultimately it it wasn't giving any better performance than what I have here. So rather than tearing this all apart and rebuilding it, you know, to get the same performance, I decided just to leave it. And we're going to be okay because you may remember in the planner, we need to get 15.19 belts out of this. Okay. So if I have 16 belts and I have a tiny gap every once in a while, you know, of one or two pieces of plastic, then I think we're going to be meeting our requirements. Um, and ultimately, if it ends up not being enough, I can always add more machines to it. All right, we got plenty of room. I mean, we could we could probably double this and still have enough room. Okay, so I'm going to consider plastic to be okay at this point. So I'll mark that off. Now I've populated the rest of my the rest of my to-do list with everything I think we need to do to get to the end. <coughs> um, so we need to do we need to upgrade steel. Uh, we need to upgrade the engine factory, uh, which is over here, making the two types of engines. Um, we need more iron because I still have a space for another smelting area for iron that I haven't filled in yet. I did fill in this, this one, uh, I filled in, in between episodes. This was nice because it's so close to the main base that I just extended the robot network out here and I let the, the bots in the main base build it. Um, I might. Maybe I'll even do the same over here. It's not, I mean, it's not too far away. In fact, I think I will do that. And then we can just let it upgrade itself offline. Um, and then after that, I want to upgrade the labs. Um, if we look at the labs now, all of our belts are full. And we've got stuff waiting in chests. Let's take a look at our rocket build here. Uh, we're at 64. So maybe, maybe it is running as fast as it can go. But anyway, we'll need to add a lot more labs and beacon the labs so that we can consume 2,500 science packs a minute. <clears throat> I think we'll need something like a hundred labs. I, I worked it out the other day. I don't remember exactly what the result was, but it was something like a hundred labs, you know, surrounded by 12 beacons each. Um, and then we can upgrade each of the science packs and then rocket fuel, low density structures, rocket control units, and then finally the rockets. Now with, with eight rocket silos, we won't need any more silos, but I might have to make the satellite build faster. I'm not sure yet. I'll need to figure that out. Um, probably, yeah, probably I will have to. Um, that's going to be a mess. I mean, that's probably going to, I may have to rebuild this entire area. 
and it was not easy to put together in the first place. But, say la vie. Um, one thing I could do to simplify it is maybe make the solar panels and accumulators in another area. Maybe I'll do that. You know, maybe I can use like one of these grid sections over here to make solar panels and accumulators or one each. Um, and then if we're mass producing those, we could even consider using solar power, but I, I don't think so. I think we'll be okay. Um, <clears throat> now the eight rocket silos will need, I think I'll need to put two beacons on each one, something like that in order to get 2,500 a minute, but, but with eight silos, we'll be fine. Okay, um, and then the other good thing is that since we got blue circuits up and running, um, <laughs> check this out. I actually have blue circuit trains waiting in the depot. Like, hey, who wants blue circuits? I got a ton of them right here. Um, so because of that, research has actually been progressing, which is awesome. So we're doing lots of mining productivity. Um, I've got, yeah, see mining productivity 14 is going to cost us 27,000 science packs. We could also do robot speed, but to be honest, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the speed of the robots as they are. Now, <clears throat> I don't have biters, so I could have built this base to ignore military science packs and just do mining productivity forever. Um, and in fact, I think that's what a lot of, well, maybe not. I guess anybody who's doing a mega base with no biters would probably do that. They would probably just design it to ignore military science. Um, but I wanted this to be 2,500 per minute of anything that you want. So that's why I included military science in the plan. Um, so I'll probably, I'll probably upgrade artillery, you know, as part of the ongoing performance monitoring for the base. I'll probably include artillery upgrades, robot speed upgrades and mining productivity. And, you know, we'll just, we'll just research whichever one happens to be cheaper at the moment. Um, you know, and just pretend that we had active defenses. Okay, well, let's get started. So this is our steel area. It's all empty now because I cut the belts so that when we pick all this up, we're not going to have a ton of iron ore and iron plates clogging up our inventory. Okay, and... <clears throat> I imagine that my inventory is probably going to get full. Um, another thing I did since the last episode is with my Mark III armor, um, I added two more fusion reactors. I added another exoskeleton. I added, I think, four more batteries and two more roboports. And we have Mark IV armor available as well, but I don't really feel like I need it. I think I'll probably just stay with Mark III. Right, so now I've got 200 personal bots, which as long as I'm, you know, <clears throat> I guess, I guess part of the issue is like, you know, I can always add more bots and stuff, but then it's just gonna, it's just gonna drain my batteries faster. Well, no, I want that. Okay. I've got a mess here. I need to, I need to dump some of this stuff. Dump all the yellow inserters. There we go. We can get rid of many of those power poles. I don't need that. Okay. And 
and I haven't I haven't run steel through the planner yet, so we'll have to see what we're gonna need here. Now I do have three grid sections reserved for steel. So I'm fairly certain that that will be enough. But we'll run the factorial planner here in a moment while we go back to the base to dump some of the stuff that we picked up. Um, speaking of the main base, I'm bringing concrete in now for the nuclear reactors. Um, remember that little circuit that I set up that would make one eight reactor array at a time? Well, I multiplied that by six since a full grid has six of those arrays. So that's what I've got here and they're all ready to go. So as soon as we need more power, I've got enough stuff to make six more reactor arrays over here in this area that I've already prepared. So that'll be ready to go when it's required. Okay, let's get rid of all that. We don't need any of the yellow stuff. I'm gonna keep the furnaces because we're gonna need a lot of those. And that's empty. So over here for the concrete, I only have one loading station. So what I did is I just put eight, eight stops in a row. So each one will line up one of the cargo wagons with that. Um, and then let me show you the, and then I set up this schedule, right? So it goes to load one until it has 4,000 and then it goes to the next one until it has 8,000 and so on, all the way up to 32,000 and then it waits here until it's empty, and then it goes back to repeat the process. So this way we'll always have tons of concrete available to, to make the reactors. Okay, let's do, let's do our calculator for steel. Uh, let me check my factorial calculator web page it's telling me i need 24401 steel per minute oops all right and i have three sections so if i divide that by 3 24 whoops 24401 divided by 3 that's 8,134, let's say, round it up. And then if we divide that by eight columns, that's 1,017 per minute per column. Okay, and then we're gonna load productivity modules in the furnaces. Let's have speed modules. Let's do, I'm gonna do 10 each. And I'm saying 10 <clears throat> instead of 12 because I wanna have direct insertion of the furnace for iron going into the furnace for the steel. Okay, and if we look at the iron plate, we should have 19.8 or less required there. I think it'll be less. Yeah. And the reason it's less, you know, normally it's a one to one ratio between iron and steel production. But since we're going to have productivity modules in the iron furnace, <clears throat> we need less than one to one because we're going to be making a few extra plates every once in a while to feed the steel. So but I'm still going to build it as a one to one ratio and we'll do it with 20. Maybe I should make it with 22. We'll see if we can do 22. Let's see what 22 is gonna look like. 
in terms of belts. Okay, that's going to need one and a half belts of ore, so two belts of ore and two belts of... Okay, well, I'm not going to have belts of plates, so I need two belts of ore coming in and one, like a half belt of steel coming out. 0 0.04 plus 0 0.37 um, is 0 0.41. Okay. Good. And we already know how to get two belts of ore by doing this. How many furnaces do I have here? That's 18. That should be good. Um, I'm just going to check that post again real quick. So I can recall what is the exact output of this setup. Uh, this will give me, okay. Yeah. Each one will give me 41.53 per second. So 41.53 divided by 45, that's 0.92 belts, right? So two of these is like 1.8 belts and we need 1.4 coming in. Okay. So this, this unloading setup will work just fine. All right, so let's head over there and let's see what we can do. Now, if we have 22 in each of these three sections, that's 66 in total. So I'm gonna see if I can make 33 fit. I don't think so. I might not even be able to make 22 fit. So I guess we shouldn't get too too carried away here. Because if I can get 33 to fit, then I'll, I'll only need two. But then again, I might that might exceed my capacity, my unloading capacity. So I guess we'll have to be careful about that. All right, let me pick that up. And then I get a bunch of iron ore, which of course I don't want any of. Let's auto trash it. Okay. And then I'll put this in there. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, all hooked up. Okay, actually let me undo that. And then what I'll do is I'll just control click and, gra and drag and I'll let auto, what is it called? Even distribution mod will get rid of it all for me. Okay, and then so to start with, we have some empty chests, so it's we're not going to be quite getting full throughput until the next train or two comes in. And speaking of two, let's make this, let's set this up to bring two trains worth. Okay, so this is approximately the center. And I think, actually, I think I probably ought to copy all of this, too. And that'll save me the pain of having to run all the input belts. I could compress this a bit, couldn't I? I 
I could take out that much. And these can move up by one tile. And then that moves up there. And that's the most compact arrangement. We could probably make it more compact if I use some undergrounds and stuff, but hopefully this will suffice. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to remove these undergrounds. <clears throat> Simply because I don't want any of it to start to flow in yet. Okay, so this is the middle, and then we'll have one... And one. Okay, so how are we doing? We're just doing our pickup like that. Half a belt out. I could just do that. What am I getting items per minute here? Let's say 1200. So if I have 1200 per minute divided by 60, that's 20 per second. <clears throat> 20 per second? That doesn't sound right. No. <laughs> yeah, 20 per second divided by 22. So I think I think I can just use a single blue inserter on the output. That's as far as that goes, and then go up like that, right? I think that's it. Then we can toss a light there. We can put a substation there, let's say. Is there any advantage to doing this instead of outputting on the side? I don't think so. But I don't think it hurts anything to do that either. And it does leave this whole side clean for for power. All right, let's see what the second column would look like. Pretty much the same. Okay. And then we actually don't need that on the first one. Okay. So if we're doing 22 of these, I need 11 of these, and then I switch to the second belt, right? So that's two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I don't have enough space for twenty two. <sighs> okay. So the next question is Do I have enough space to go twice as wide? Okay, so we're going to have to change. I mean, the basic building block is okay, but we're going to have to make 16 columns of 11 rather than 8 columns of 22, which means this is going to have to change. Okay, so let's copy this entire thing here. That's going to be our basic, well, yeah, that's our basic column, but I'm only going to need, I only need one belt of ore coming up here. So we can remove all this. Um, and we're going to have to make some other changes too, because these belts don't reach. Or what if I turned it horizontally? Maybe that would be better. Whoops. All right, if I did it like this. I think that's still not, I think that's still too big for 20 to get 22 of these things. But let's try it. Let's see if we did this. So if these were our two belts, then in this case we would need a chest, since that's all that's going to fit. same on the output side. And then if I used standard power poles, we could compress it by one more tile. So that could work. And then when we get to the point in the middle, I would have to expand it by one more tile so I can change or belts. But then the question is, can we fit 22 of these? Let's see, one, two, three, 
four, eight, twelve, sixteen, nope, twenty. Okay, so we go with 16 columns of 11. my whole column. Did I lose it? Yeah, I'm going to delete that. All right, so I'm going to make a blueprint out of this and save it. And then I'm going to delete it all. Well, yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'll delete the whole top half of it. No, I do need to delete it all, don't I? Let's see. No, what I wanna do is I wanna make one sixteen wide so I can see where all the belts have to go, and then I can figure out where I need to build the bottom of it. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that should just clear the rails over there. Yep. You know, we, we could always remove stacker lanes too if we got really tight on space. We don't have to have four lanes on each side. Okay, and that should be 16 furnaces. Yeah. And then we put the other 16 there. Okay. So now I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to slide it up. Like so. Alright, we don't actually have to build it. But if the bots want to build it, I'll let them build it. Because I'm just going to move it anyway. Once I figure out what's the lowest I can place at all. Okay. <clears throat> and then... Let's see, I need to kill that, that, uh, yeah, let's remove all that. Actually, I should just remove the same amount from each one so they stay relatively balanced, right? Second one, or no, here. That's one. And then each one is going to be the same distance away, just one tile higher, right? Like that. At least I think that's right. 
Uh, I'm always doing that. Yep, looks good. Okay, eight on each side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then it'll follow the opposite pattern on the other side. Oh, but you know what I don't like about this? Well, that's okay. What I'm gonna so what I'm gonna have to do is on the output side. I'm going to combine these two belts so that I maintain that one-to-one -one relationship between the input car and the output car. Um, okay, looks like I got the spacing a little bit wrong. I was off by one tile. farthest of them will still be long enough to reach. That'll save us some blue belts. All right, and then on this side, we do the inverse. Like that. And then that piece bring over and up a single tile okay that's three four five six seven eight Okay, so this one goes straight up. Yeah, that one goes over. That one goes there. Okay, and they're not exactly the same. Yeah, because the the input itself is slightly off center. Okay, so then I cut this and bring it down as low as it'll go, which is right there. And it looks like I'm looks like I'm off on some of these. Okay, yeah, so some of these are a little bit too far away. They all connect, as far as I can tell. All right. So that's as far as we can take it right there. Okay. So that's one. And now we need ten more, just like it. Oops. I didn't mean to do that. 
I meant to copy. There we go. All right, so there's two. And I have to fix this first one. This first set of underground belts we can remove. Okay, and then we need to add a belt there. I think that'll get picked up automatically when I copy the print. All right, let's try this again. There we go. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, and eleven. Okay. Well, it looks like surprisingly I had all the furnaces that I needed. doing on blue belts. I'm out of blue belts. I'm out of blue undergrounds, substations, inserters, all that other good stuff. But that's the basic build. Let me grab my belts. I'll grab beacons. I'll do... How many modules do I need? Let's grab like half of the prod modules and all of the speed modules. See what we can get done here. Before I go back to resupply. Okay, well that didn't take me very far, did it? Good lord. I've got an error. I need an underground there. <laughs> I've got underground belts that are going nowhere. Okay, I'll have to fix that. I'm glad I didn't hook up the ore yet. Or this would be a mess. More of a mess. All right, well, I'm just gonna pause while I finish building this, and then when it's done, we'll come back and turn it on. Be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. I'm just fixing this um, underground belt here on the output that I missed from every single one of these. Uh, I think I'm getting carpal tunnel syndrome from doing this. But I'm almost done. Last column. And then we can connect the ore. Watch the steel being made. Hopefully it'll work perfectly. And then we just need to connect the output side. Whew. Ugh. Boy, that was a pain. But I have to say this is uh, a rather impressive build here at least in terms of size. Okay, 
Um, actually, let me turn off the power while I connect the ore, so that way we can turn on everything all at once. It helps keep each column perfectly balanced with the other ones. I didn't miscalculate anything but it's all been built took quite a few beacons and speed modules I had to make several trips to get it all all right well now the moment of truth Good God. <laughs> These undergrounds don't reach. Oh, good Lord. And I even said that. I knew that they didn't reach. Okay. All right. So I need to remove at least one underground all the way across. Which is going to give me a little bit of ore. And I need two belts. Okay. It's got to be like that. Alright, so that means I'm going to need to remove all the undergrounds from each of these columns. can't just select everything though cuz the output belt is okay now Uh, it's kind of a pain to move through these builds with all the beacons and then because the assembly machines or in this case the furnaces are offset from the beacons it makes it hard to just run through the factory in a straight line unless you're right right in between the last you know the edge of the of the last beacons Alright, so after I do this, then I'm going to have to replace all these with with a set of undergrounds plus two belts. Actually, I think this first, I think the first underground in each of these columns is probably okay where it is, but it's the second one that I need to remove. But either way, it's the same amount of work for me, not for the bots. <laughs> A little bit more work for the bots. Still doing good on batteries though, so that's good. Last one. You wouldn't think that this would be so difficult. And yet it is. All right. And then I just copy that. 
all the way across. And I'm going to do it manually like this for the second one too. Because this first row is not exactly like the second one because of that underground that comes after the output inserter on the steel furnace which I previously spent about 15 minutes methodically correcting okay so now no now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy all the way across like this I'm gonna hold down shift and let's just I'll leave the furnaces as a guide for where they should go and I'll remove everything else Okay, like that. I'll just paste it all down first and then I'll run through and make sure it all gets built. All right, and then the top portion we can remove the second belt and the second underground. Those are not required. And it looks like I still have a problem in, oh, okay. Yeah, I have a problem in some places. I don't see ore everywhere because uh, not all the belts have been put down by the bots yet. Don't panic. There it goes. All right, so once we can see ore at the end of every one of these columns, then we'll know that we're ready to go. And then we'll turn on the power. Okay. I think I got it all fixed this time. that this belt of ore is making it all the way to the end. Okay, good. So now we just have to clean up the output side. Let's see, and what are we making with one of these? We're making about a thousand, 1017 per minute. That's 63 and a half. No. Is that right? Oh, no. I'm only doing half as much because I doubled the number of columns. Well, no, that's okay because I'm going to have 22 going to each cargo wagon. Right? Yeah, so I'm getting a little over 1100 per minute per pair of columns divided by 60. Okay, that's 18.3 per second. Yeah, so two, two stack inserters on each side 
will be more than enough. Okay, so I'm going to turn this off. And we'll start hooking up the outputs. So it's two, four, six, eight. Yeah, so this is the middle. These two need to go up here. So how do I want to do this? I could, I could merge them. So that we fill both sides of the belt. Like that. I suppose that's not bad. Second one needs to, yeah, so let's just copy, let me just copy this. side will do something similar. Although in this case, it'll go like that. Hopefully these will all end up with roughly equal quantities in their chests once this belt drains. 425, ooh, no, 
that are not equal at all. The ones in the middle are lower than the ones on the ends. Oh, does that make sense? I don't know why that is. I mean, it must have something to do with the belt paths. That's the only thing I can think of that would explain it. Because the the length of the belt paths between each column are unequal. Why am I getting full belts? Yeah, 11 should only be giving me 0.2 of a belt. That's why are these belts full. Okay, the inserters are not fast enough, it seems. Alright, well that's easy to fix. Just double it. enough. Well, that's because the belts are kind of full already. We'll let it run for a minute and then hopefully these belts will start to empty out. Oh. What? Good God. I'm missing some, I'm missing productivity modules from some of these. Oh, man. I'm terrible at this. I'm going to have to cut the power again. How the heck did that happen? Look at that. has modules, right? And we can do a quick check. If I just select everything. 352 furnaces. Seven hundred and four modules. Okay. And we can get rid of that one. Let's see how the loading goes. Yeah, well, and I think that's why the belts were full because without the modules, they don't have the 30% 30% speed penalty. And so they're going to produce faster, but they're just going to use a lot more iron to do it. So that explains it. Okay, well, steel is done. Now I just have to copy it two more times, which I'll work on 
when I have a chance to do so. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.